hypothesis was first studied in the early 1600s by John van Thelman, a Flemish botanist. In his experiment, he weighed a pot of soil and planted a small willow tree in it, adding only water to the pot. After five years, he found out that the tree had gained 75 kilograms, but there was almost no change in the weight of the soil. Van Helmont believed that the new plant material came directly from water. In the late 1600s, John Woodward tested Van Helmont's hypothesis. He found out that one plant only gained one gram after the addition of 76 kilograms of water for 77 days. He concluded that most of the water was exhaled into the atmosphere. Thus, the hypothesis that water is the nutrient used by plants for growth was rejected. In 1771, Joseph Priestley, an English chemist, put a sprig of mint into a transparent closed jar with a candle that burned out of the air until it soon went out. At that time, oxygen was not yet discovered. After 27 days, he relit the extinguished candle again and it burned perfectly well in the air that previously would not support it. And how did Priestley light the candle if it was placed in a closed jar? He focused sunlight beams with a mirror into the candle wick. Priestley had no bright source of light and had to rely on the sun. So Priestley proved that plants somehow changed the composition of the air. In another celebrated experiment in 1772, Priestley kept a mouse in a jar of air until it collapsed. He found that a mouse kept with a plant inside a jar would survive. These observations led Priestley to offer an interesting hypothesis that plants restore to the air whatever breathing animals and burning candles remove. This was also the first evidence that plants and animals interact with air. John Engenhaus discovered that plants give off oxygen only in the presence of sunlight. In 1779, he demonstrated this by burning up all the oxygen in the jar with a plant. He then left the plant in sunlight for a few days to restore the air. Then, without relighting the candle, he put the plant into the darkness for several more days. At the end of the dark period, he was unable to relight the candle. He concluded that a plant in darkness acts like an animal using up the oxygen that it had created. It must have breathed fouling the air, and in order to purify the air, plants need light. Scientists soon found out that the growth of plants is accompanied by an increase in their carbon content. A Swiss minister, Jean Senebier, discovered that the source of this carbon is carbon dioxide and that the release of oxygen during photosynthesis accompanies the uptake of carbon dioxide. By the beginning of 1800s, scientists had identified the basic requirements for plant growth, carbon dioxide, water, and light. <laughs>